Mina, Ohio Gazimash, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Last chapter of 1 Kings. I don't know, it's 22 chapters long and it's the better part of a month. I don't know, it just feels like time's flying by and on YouTube and through the Bible, life in general. I'm just getting old, is what it is. There's a big, like, question in this chapter, and I was like, I was thinking, like, what should I talk about today? What what part of this chapter should I kind of, like, pick from? And th this part is so big, it was kind of like, you know, I, om it's almost like even if there was something else I'd rather speak on, I feel, like, obliged to talk about this because this is a very big deal, and I think this can probably throw a lot of people for a loop, and I believe I have a decent answer for it. So I'm going to share that. To set this entire thing up, this Ahab is about to die in battle. And the king of Judah, which is Jehoshaphat, who's a godly man, shouldn't have been with Ahab. He's actually faulted for it later on in this chapter. He's with him. And so they're like, okay, should we go up to, um, should we fight at Ramoth Gilead? He inquires of the prophets. And he's like, and all the prophets, 400 men according to verse 6. And they're like, yeah, go get them. And Judge Fat's like, is there a prophet of Yahweh we can inquire of? And Ahab's like, eh, I don't like going to him. He never says anything good about me. And Judge Fat says, let not the king say such things. That's just funny to me. It's like... <laughs> Didn't you know Ahab was a bad man? Didn't you know he wasn't serving the Lord? Even if you were trying to have some kind of relationship with, you know, your Israeli brother, you were trying to reconcile the kingdom's good motivation, didn't, didn't you understand that this dude had a very bad wife, a very shady past, he got a bunch of prophets of other gods in front of you? Obviously, a prophet of God isn't going to have much good to say. So, he basically says, it's not going to end well. Ahab's like, you always say bad stuff about me. And he said to Jehoshaphat, in verse 18, And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you he would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? Now here's where the bomb is really dropped. Verse 19, Then Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by, on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will persuade Ahab to go up, that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead. So one spoke in this manner, and another spoke in that manner. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. The Lord said to him, In what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, You shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. Therefore look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. Now, on one hand, some people would say, well, Brandon, you've covered God killing infants and children and endorsing slavery on your channel, so God uh, letting a lying spirit be in the mouth of Ahab's prophets, not really a big deal for this particular God, to which I will shortly respond. And other, you, other of you are probably thinking, why is God endorsing a lying spirit? Isn't he the God of truth? Isn't he the God of honesty? Isn't he the one who put that, you know, don't, um, don't, you know, bear false witness against your neighbor in the Ten Commandments? What's going on here? <clears throat> and my answer to both groups would be an explanation of this passage. Ahab was not serving God. He was serving false gods. And those false gods had false prophets. If Ahab is actively listening to those prophets, one, if my first thought is, you know, if if God hadn't purposefully sent a lying spirit, or I guess you could say heeded the advice of a demon, then you would have a bunch of guys who had no guidance whatsoever, probably wanting to suck up to the king, make him feel good, and they'd probably still be saying the same thing. So He's not in good shape one way or the other. Number two, and this isn't a direct answer either. Number two, you have a prophet telling Ahab, by the way, 
they're liars. This is a lying spirit. The Lord's decree disaster for you. And this guy still goes out to battle. And Lot's of the providence says, by the way, lock him up till I come back. And the prophet's parting shot, uh, I, I won't say final shot, I don't know if they ever released him from prison or not, but he said, if he ever comes back alive, the Lord hasn't spoken through me. Take heed, all you people. And Ahab still goes out. And I, I would love to be a fly on the wall and hear the conversation between Jehoshaphat and Ahab after the prophet of God said what he had to say. Jehoshaphat being a godly man, I wonder how much he encouraged Ahab not to go out. And now for the actual answer. There comes a point in someone's sinfulness where the Lord... I want, he doesn't make them sin, but he will harden their heart so that they will continue in the sin they've gone in. It's kind of like they've crossed a point of grace where the Lord says, okay, your time is up. Now you're damned. Now there's no hope for you. Hebrews talks about a point um, where Esau sought for grace desperately and couldn't find it. <clears throat> The story of Pharaoh and Exodus. Um, actually, that what I just said directly came from there. Several for the first five. I want to say for the first five or six plagues, the Bible says that Pharaoh hardened his heart, and then for the sixth or seventh plague afterward, then it says, "And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart." So, the Pharaoh is walking in disobedience all this time, and eventually the Lord's just like, "Stay in your disobedience. Stay there." And I'll show my glory through your sinfulness. I'll show my righteousness through my judgment of you. And so Ahab is listening to false prophets. He's worshiping a false god. God's essentially saying, just stay in your falseness until your death. Stay in your lies unto your destruction. That demon had every right to say through his prophets whatever he wanted. And the Lord said, go ahead. That's the route that man's chosen. He's listening to you already. Go for it. It's not the Lord's fault when we listen to lies. It's not the Lord's fault when we know his way, which Ahab did. He was born in Israel, so the name of Yahweh was known. It's not God's fault when we deliberately go against his will and choose against him. If the Lord said, okay. Stay in your sin. Stay away from me. That's the Lord's right. That's the Lord's prerogative. You know, hard heart be harder still. Um, it also mentions, again, in the New Testament, let's bring it into modern day. In 2 Thessalonians, it says, God will send a spirit of strong delusion on those who believe in the Antichrist and who choose him. So God's principles have not changed from the Old to the New Testament. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. The brutal, judgmental God of the Old Testament is the same loving, merciful God of the New Testament. He had love and mercy in the Old. He has judgment and wrath in the New. And it still just blows my mind that Ahab's given the direct, blunt truth straight from the mouth of the prophet of the Lord. And even after like the lie is exposed... He goes on his way to destruction. And I think that kind of seals the deal or clinches my point. He was headed in that direction, and the bold-faced truth did not stop him. A godly king next to him, a godly prophet in front of him, and he did not stop on that path. He chose his destruction. So the Lord wasn't at fault for letting him walk in a path that he was bound and determined regardless of the cost to walk in. That's not on God. There comes a point where your time's up, where there is no more grace or mercy. God, please, for me and for the sake of those that are my friends and my family and my church and my freaks, my audience, please let that point be so far removed from us that your spirit will always be on us and that your mercy and your grace will always be there for us to rely upon. And God, I do pray that even if we cross that point of no return, that you will give us just the bold-faced truth 
in the middle of the bold face lie we're believing. So that ultimately when we stand before you, we have no excuse. And that we've always been given a chance by you to walk in your truth. Give us the same mercy and grace that you gave Ahab. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, that was a bit of a long one. And yeah, no apologies for that whatsoever. The full sermon has still come out. I've been enjoying Dark Souls way, way, way too much. Not really sorry for that either. Walking in my own path of destruction, so to speak. I'm dying plenty. Um, getting pretty good, though. And that has nothing to do with Jesus, so I will just close it up there and say thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.